Hi guys and welcome to another ODM technical video. In this video uh, we're going to build upon something we talked about earlier and we're going to talk about decision tables. So previously we had a simple rule where if a customer orders five or more red widgets we will give them a 10% discount. And the way that looked as a rule looked very much like this. We had a single rule uh, where we looked at the sale and if we said there was at least 20 widgets or 5 widgets or whatever the number was and the colour of the widget was red, we'd give them a discount of 10%. Well, now imagine that we are selling lots and lots of different kinds of widgets, red widgets, blue widgets, green widgets, and we wanted different thresholds and different uh, discounts. So we could add more and more rules. We could keep adding more and more rules here and we would end up with an array of rules and when an order arrives we would execute all of the rules and the ones that executed that evaluated to true would set the discount. Now that works, that's great, but it's not that readable. If you wanted to find or change a particular rule, you would have to go through all the different rules. So instead what we want to do is we want to look at a different technique, the notion of a table. So if we look at this table below here, it should be quite obvious to us that we have the different types of widgets, the reds, the greens and the blues, and the different thresholds of quantity and the discounts which apply. Now we can imagine this in a spreadsheet or we can imagine this other ways, but uh, this is the rule set that we want to to model within the ODM environment. So this is an alternative technique than specifying rules in the uh, business activity language or business action language like uh, BAL. This is a different technique and what I want to show you is how ODM accommodates this. So we come up to our ODM uh, insight designer, uh, I'm sorry, rule designer here and uh, we no longer want this rule. We're going to delete this rule because we're going to replace this rule with uh, what's called a decision table. We come over here, we select our rules, new, and we have decision table. So I'll call this unimaginatively table number one and we're given a table structure. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to define the layout of our table. Having these elements A, B, C, D here, those aren't very useful. So we click, uh, we click on a table column and we edit the column. So I'm going to call this one type. This is going to be our widget type. And the condition here, the logic for the values of our cells our cells is going to be the widget type of the current sale is a string and this here becomes a placeholder so when we enter values in our cells here this expression will be evaluated. So if I was to type red in one of these cells, the expression would be the widget type of a cell is red. So if I hit the OK here, we now have our first column. So let's uh, create another column now. Let's uh, uh, come here, let's edit this condition. And this one is going to be the quantity. Now this one will make a little bit more interesting. Uh, this one is going to be the quantity of the current sale is between a minimum and a maximum value. And I'll hit uh, OK here. And now we see we have a single column quantity which is broken up into two elements. Now column C, we don't need column C. I'll remove that. And the final action column what we want to happen if these expressions evaluate to true, we will come in here and we will change the title of this column to be the discount. And the discount, we're going to set the variable discount to be a number. And that's it. Now we have set up our table and now we can start entering values. So let me bring up my cheat sheet again and we said uh, red 10 to maximum is going to be 10%. So I can come in here, I can type red 10 to my maximum is going to be 10%. 
So notice this discount column here, these number values. Well, uh, 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 not point 0.1 is 10%, but I can come in here and I can format this column. I can say I'm going to format it as a percentage. Say OK, and now it's 10%. So let's go back to my cheat sheet, fill in the next one. Green 20 is going to be 10%. So I come in here, I say green 20 to my maximum is going to be not 0.2, which is 20%. And the third one, which was blue, 10 to 19 is going to be 15%. Blue, 10 to 19 is going to be 15%, not 0.15. And uh, let me see if I can remember how to do this. This one is also going to be blue. And this one is going to be 20 to my maximum. And that's going to be, oh, not 0 0.2, 20%. But we're told here we have a problem because we have two elements here which match. So let's see, a, I select this, select merge, and now we have a, a data in our table that matches up exactly as we want. So we can see here that we can express this decision table as a set of values here. Now, one more thing is that the discount is going to be set if any of these values match. Usually, we want something like an otherwise. So otherwise, if none of these things match, we want to set the decision to be 0%. Oops, let me remove that line. There we go. So now we have a complete consistent decision table. I save this. I go to my deployment characteristics. I right click it. I select to deploy it to my rule execution server. Next, 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 next and finish. It's now deployed as quick as you like to my rule execution server. So if I bring up my rule execution server test environment, Look at my uh, rules here. Here is my rule. Let's now sort of drill into that rule so we can test it. I come over here, retrieve the testing tool, say I'm going to test the latest version, hit the test button, say I'm going to specify JSON as my testing data, and let's try some of these tests out. So let's, let's go for green, uh, if it's over 20, it'll be a 10% discount. So let's try green at three widgets, execute, and we get no discount. Let's try 19, no discount. Let's try 20, discount, 20%, exactly what we hoped it would be. Now let's try blue at, say, 15, and we should get a 15% discount blue at 15, execute, we get a 15% discount, and finally let's have a look at blue at 25, we should get a 25% a, a discount. Blue at 25, execute, or rather a 20% discount, I think is what I said I wanted, yeah, 20% discount, and we get a 20% discount. Excellent. Look how easy and quick that was to create ourselves a decision table. So decision tables are one of the other core mechanisms in the ODM decision description capabilities to allow us to describe data. Now, we also want to see what this looks like from a decision center perspective. So in decision center, we can log in and we can have a look at uh, uh, we can have a look at what it looks like from a business perspective. So first of all, I'm going to deploy this new solution to my decision center. Uh, connect to my decision center. Uh, hit the finish button. It's publishing a, a, this new solution out to my decision center. Give that a few seconds to cook. Done. Now, if I log in to my decision center, we see that we have uh, a new rule out there, a new project. There we go, my POC1. Let's drill into this. Now look at the artifacts in my POC uh, project, and we see we have a table. Now, if I select that table, there it is. And this is what it looks like to a business user. 
Now I can come in here and I can edit my rules, edit my values. Now imagine I'm a business user, so I can come in here and I can edit my values. And maybe I want to add a new widget type. We'll add this above. We'll say this one is going to be cyan. And uh, we got lots of stock in this, so we don't want to order, give much of a discount. So if it's between 50 and the maximum values, uh, let's give a 5% discount. No, that's a 50% discount. Let's try that again. Not point, not 5. There's a 5% discount. So having made this change in my decision center in the browser, again, imagine I'm a business user, no Eclipse, no technology involved. I can save my changes, create a new version of this, and now I can go back. I can apply those changes to my running environment. I can hit the deploy button, deploy. It's now being pushed out to my running environment, and those changes have now taken effect. So we can go and test this. If I now say I have, uh, I'm ordering, let's say, five instances of cyan, execute the request, nothing. But now let's say I'm ordering 75 instances of cyan, and now I've got a 5% discount. And that's how quick it is and how easy it is in order to be able to change these rules through the business console in Decision Center. Great. And that's what I wanted to show you, my friends. I wanted to illustrate the capabilities of creating decision tables uh, in both uh, Rule Designer and in the business console. Thanks now, and I look forward to making more of these videos in the future. Bye for now.